Hey, Brick Maniacs. Welcome back once again to another Mobile Designer Studio episode. I have John Canepa join me once again with an awesome little kit to discuss. This is the Agile, which is, I mean, got to be up there on the list of some of the craziest kits you've ever created. I mean, this little it's, thing is kind of absurd. It's got the, it's probably got the most amount of parts packed in the smallest amount of space. Sure. You know? I mean, let's just go right to it. I mean, look at that thing. It's just <laughs> teensy weensy. Uh, it's the uh, mos mosquito of uh, helicopters. Indeed, yeah, absolutely. Um, a little bit more durable than mosquitoes, though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna, you know, I, I had, I got this out because this was my when I did it when I was Brick Brigade. Mm -hmm. This is what it looked like, which is just me kind of eyeballing it and go, oh, okay, it's got some guns here and some missiles here and a little flap in the back, and you know, it was it wasn't it didn't fly off the shelves, but some people liked it. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Tribute to James Bond, mm -hmm. um, but look how far it's come. I mean, the the uh, just just the design techniques and the the types of parts that you can get mm -hmm. um, does allow you to make it maybe a little bit closer to what the actual Scale. dimensions would be. Um, and it was kind of fun learning about it. That is, you know, for me, it didn't really matter necessarily if it was a real thing or not. Mm -hmm. It was just for a movie. I like doing them anyway, but it's kind of nice that this is actual real invention by Wallace Sagile. No, mm. yeah, Wallace well, Sag Wallace was the company. Wallace, yeah, whatever his name was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I didn't, I don't write, I didn't write any notes for this, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm winging it. Um, but anyways, that is actually a real, real invention, and of mm -hmm. course they just, you know, threw some missiles and and. Flames, the flamethrowers in the back were, were <laughs> I mean, that was, I mean, if to, to dive into the actual design of it, that was mm -hmm. a challenge sure. to get them in the right position, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's coming off of an angle, right? And then it has to straighten out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to, right. It has to be upright, level, and straight. Mm -hmm. So like I was saying before, not to sound like a broken record, but the use of, uh, in this case, the use of monopods. Yeah, is what I think there's three, one, two, three, which allows me a whole lot of positioning ability, right? Mm -hmm. It's like having something on a on a, uh, a round ball, so right? I'm pretty much aiming wherever I want, so I could get it in exactly the right spot. Right, and they're small yeah. and don't take up much space, and so you can keep it in that scale without having to worry about using something like a longer pin. Exactly, and you know when we when we do these kits, so let me turn it this way so you can see the beauty of this. Uh, uh, printing back here. Um, when we do these kits, we're constantly looking at where does the flamethrower lie in re regards to the to the rudder back here, right? Mm -hmm. How does yeah, it line? Right. So you have to kind of okay, that's too far back. Let me try a different part. Okay, mm -hmm. that's too far forward. Let me try something else. And that's that's what it takes. It's just constant revision until you get it more or less the right spot. I mean, it's you know as close as you can get right? mm -hmm. without being too too meticulous about it right but yeah it i i'm really happy with the way it turned out um the printing on here is exquisite as usual <laughs> the cool the cool little you know custom helmet mm -hmm. with the thing that he had on which i guess was a camera yeah right a little That's gopro pretty... action <laughs> yeah exactly for back in the james bond days um that's why i wore this shirt because Han Solo's kind of a James Bond type of guy. Okay, you know? I was just about to say, that's not James Bond, though. <laughs> no, I don't have a James Bond shirt. I have a lot of uh, these kind of shirts, but I don't mm -hmm. have any James Bond-related shirts. But Fair enough. But that's as close as I could get. So, so yeah, it's a fun little kit. This was my this was my prototype, and I brought this out just to... I haven't uh, decided... I usually wait until these and before I take it apart. Mm -hmm. um, but... When I'm building, and which a lot of people do this, because uh, I've seen I've seen kids kit, uh, um, concepts when they're building, mm -hmm. you just use whatever color part you have. It really doesn't right. matter. Um, as long as you can kind of envision it in your head of, of what you wanted to do, because you build it, and then you can always buy the parts later. And then exactly. In. But you can see this thing has got a lot of parts that don't actually match mm -hmm. the color scheme of you know the finished product here. Right. So just just a reminder, it doesn't matter if you don't have all the colored parts that you need. You just build till you get the design right, mm -hmm. and then color can, can come in. I mean, you, 
as as you build, you do constantly check if the parts are available in that color. Right. If they're not too expensive in that color, mm -hmm. especially for this. I mean, when we build these kits, we have to keep considering that uh, this has to be made into a kit. So the you know I can't this this part on the end can't be eight dollars. Exactly. It just skews the whole the whole kit, and then it's not comfortable to buy anymore because it's too expensive for the, what it is, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so that's a constant, constant battle to uh, make sure that you're um, keeping those elements in mind when you're building. Yeah. Right. So, absolutely. so, so a customer might say, Oh, why didn't you use this part of that part? And that's the reason mm -hmm. because, you know, a one by two green tile is four dollars each mm -hmm. so we don't use one by two green tiles like i'm <laughs> this is enough nothing against the uh um designer that I, I i bought this sticker pack to make this thing this is i don't know if you can tell what it is from just this portion mm -mm. it's from the indiana jones movie uh and the last crusade uh, excuse me raiders of the lost ark when mm -hmm. they're gonna fly oh did the one he backs up the guy into <laughs> The one that he he, he the bald the bald guy gets his, yeah. uh, it's a a further skull trim unfortunately, <laughs> but he called for one by two green tiles, which they have come down a little bit in price. But mm -hmm. you know if it takes forty of them and they're two dollars a piece, so I could just buy a ten to use a ten cent uh, one by one mm -hmm. versus a two dollar one by two anyway. Right there you go. Well, it's all the kind of stuff, you know, it's interesting you bring that up, too, because we, you know, when we've had the expansion now of not just yourself, but some of these other outside designers, that's the number one thing that everyone is talking about that, you know, is very different from the mock creating process versus the kit building process is that you can create, you know, one of pretty much anything looking exactly the way you want it to look, right. depending on the budget you have. But it's very difficult to create 50 or 100 of those things if you're using rare parts or expensive parts whatsoever. Exactly. Exactly. So you have to make substitutions and get creative. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's, it. that's part of the, that's part of the challenge, especially when it's a small thing like this. Well, oh gosh, this part would be perfect. Then you look online. It's like, Oh, nope, mm -hmm. no way. Um, I think maybe I mentioned it last time, but that was the same situation with the uh, landing craft that I was building mm -hmm. medium blue, right? There's mm -hmm. only a certain number of parts, medium blue. So right. You got you to gotta figure out a way to make those amount of parts work in the space that you have. So you have to constantly redesign once you, what I did with it, for, this is a, this is a good, nice hint too. What I did for that one is I, I looked to see what parts were available. I put them in a tray, like in a different color, but just as a palette of, so I know, mm -hmm. so I don't have to constantly keep looking. Right. Uh, to see what exactly is uh, available. So mm -hmm. that was very helpful. I didn't have to stop what I was doing. I could just go, oh, okay, I can use two by three tiles and go on from there. So, because even if you're building little... in a different color, you know that they are available. Exactly, exactly. Of course, it was white and medium blue. White, of course, there's a lot more variety mm -hmm. of parts. So that wasn't necessarily an issue. But you do sometimes you go, hmm, that's it's a long part maybe i should check just to make sure it's not you know exorbitantly expensive so so yeah that's part of it but yeah it was a it was a fun little build challenging like all all the kits every single kit is like that mm -hmm. and again when you're building it like i was saying before when you're building these helicopters um that are not a you know their their frame is made up of supports mm -hmm. rather than solid pieces when you're first building this, anybody that has bought this kit probably knows it's like, oh god, this thing's not never going to hold together. Then once you put all the supports on, every time you put a support, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And then afterward, you can, you know, pretty much grab it anywhere and fly mm -hmm. it around, and it's not going to, uh, you know, go kaput on you and right fall off and you start crying and mm -hmm. <laughs> although. For the when we talk about the mass helicopter, I was getting it off my shelf up on top over here, and I, and I didn't want to get a, the proper ladder to get it. Uh -oh. I almost dropped. <laughs> I should have. I should have just seen if it would stay together. But we'll see. Right. See if it could survive that that tough landing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Rough landing. So. Well, I think my yeah. favorite thing about the Agile kit itself, too, is just that, like you were saying earlier, it is it does exist in real life. But what isn't a little bit more Brickmania when it's got 
missiles and a full loadout on it. And I think that was the cool part about this was to be able to not just create that, but to use the one from the movie that had a little bit of firepower. Yeah, I mean, it's got it's got uh, rockets, it's got missiles, it's got machine guns, flamethrowers. I mean, what more do you need, really? Yeah, I mean, packed into one little compact frame. I mean, that is that is one deadly machine. <laughs> yeah, it's so so tiny. If the, uh, the person, if so if someone's chasing you, all you need to do is make a quick maneuver, and they're like lose sight of you, and you're behind them, and then goodbye, mm -hmm. goodbye, Mister Bond. <laughs> Oh, that you is expect fantastic. Me, you expect me to die. <laughs> no, Mr. Bond. Not with, a, not with no, equipment I, like that. I, I messed up the line. He says, do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond. I expect you to die. Right, right. <laughs> I, if I recall correctly, Austin Powers had a little bit of fun with that line as well. Yeah. Pretty iconic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. But yeah, that's a, that's, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad we're able to make that into a kit. And that it you know, it, it sort of, um, what's the, what's the word for it? That it, uh, uh it, uh, when something, my brain went dead. <laughs> it's a V2. It's a, when something evolves, there we go. Sure. I, I knew it would finally come to me after some dead air. Right. <laughs> they evolved from this, which was rather, you know, sort of like, um, a little bit rugged as far as the design goes. Mm -hmm. to something a little bit more streamlined. That's always that's always a to see, to see something change, uh, transform like that. So, well, it's an awesome like just lesson or a visual representation of the parts evolution of Lego in general and just what you can right. do with these with these new parts in your catalog. Right. Exactly. So, and then you know when people add again the additional the additions of you know custom parts. Mm -hmm. which you know some people have problems using anything but a lego part purists right mm -hmm. um but you know i i've never had a problem with that i'm like I, the end result is what i'm looking for especially was, in minifig gear i mean it's a little bit different when you're trying to capture something like that helmet etc rather than like trying to create your own brick because you're not sure how to make a certain connection right right yeah yeah, so it, it all for me, it's, it it all adds to the sort of like um, the palette that you use when you're when you're building. So. Yep, I would absolutely agree. Um, is there anything else you want to touch on this model before we kick things over to Landon to talk about this uh, sandaled minifigure? <laughs> sandaled? Oh yeah, that's right. I was like, I was wearing sandals. He was or wearing was sandals. <laughs> yeah. So my original idea was to actual actually put the designer. Of the mm -hmm. kit, but I like this just as much because you get to you do that cool helmet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, he's also a very interesting looking and interesting story to him. So if anybody's interested um, for this, who the, the designer was, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting to, to look up his history and see how this came, how this vehicle came about. So mm -hmm. well, I know he was a he was an RAF pilot, if I recall. That uh, sounds right. Yeah. And then and then started this company and what and created one of the the first you know mini helicopters like this the the auto gyros that uh, eventually turned into this and then obviously they took that for the movie and I believe it was either him or a stunt pilot who was the one who was actually flying it for the aerial shots um, and then they had some cool riggings for the the Sean Connery portion of the of the action right yeah that's that's right yeah. Um... Yeah, you figure, I mean, Sean Connery obviously does probably some of his own stunts, but mm -hmm. you can't become a helicopter pilot. <laughs> that one might be a little outside the range. Yeah, right, I know what you mean. That might be a little bit over his uh, ability to, to capture right away. So anyway, yeah. The Agile. What's it? The uh, Wallace WA-116 Agile. Mm -hmm. Oh, we didn't even talk about the crates. Jeez. That's right. I almost like these better than the helicopter. Oh. <laughs> because the I mean, how cool is that? Mm -hmm. You know, open front first, classified. Oops, look at that. Look at John did. He put it upside down. This side this guy this side is right. <laughs> but yeah, I was like I, at first the the idea was to be able to take this apart and put it inside of cases. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, in the movie they show like one, maybe two cases. I think there's two cases that hold in right. a whole entire helicopter. At least that's what they were suggesting, but of course this is Lego and the parts are thick, so there there was I'd have to have you know 
15 of these to fit right. it all in. And that would be impractical. And nobody would want to pay for that. And I would get hate mail, you know, <laughs> all that sort of thing. So, so I thought this was cool. So you can, right, you can take all the, I didn't do it for this. I mean, I have a few of them in the one I built originally. This is my original design. Um, but you can take all the weapon systems off and put them in these crates, which kind of makes sense. Then you have yeah. this regular auto gyro helicopter and you can go down to the corner store and your little helicopter and get some milk without scaring the tourists, right? Right. You don't have to worry about there being a, a flamethrower hovering above your head. <laughs> right. So, you know, you don't want to, uh, um, you know, somebody's parking his car and he sees this thing coming in, landing, and, oh, geez, he doesn't want to get his car blown up by uh, <laughs> a angry James Bond. You're in my space. Yeah, well, you got to be careful. Maybe he's a Daniel Craig fan and Sean Connery might just, you know, well. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so so I thought this was a nice addition because you know when I do research for these things and you start watching the clips from that movie, you learn about the the inventor, but then they show this in one picture and you can see that all the missiles and all the the framework is in there. Um, and I was like, oh, what a cool idea to have this come with the kit. So yeah, so you get two of these and you can put all your weapons between the two of them in here. Whoops, John broke it. But it's easily fixed. Well, and it does add nicely to not only the play factor, but also the, the display factor. If you're, you know, if you're a movie buff and you want to show that off, people who know that scene Absolutely. will instantly recognize it. Right, exactly. So, so yeah, so I thought that was a nice addition. Of course it does, every time you add a part to a kit like this, the price does go up, but mm -hmm. It, it's. I, I think it was worth it because it's. Uh, it definitely um, adds something, like you said, to the, your ability to display it, and for you to know, um, it's like it feels more complete. I guess. Yeah, right? I would. I would completely agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. <laughs> we could agree. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad we got that all cleared up. Um, okay, yeah. so I'm going to bring Landon in here in a second. Anything else you want to go over on the model itself? On the model itself, no, again, it's, uh, you know, when you attach these uh, supports on the side, it does pull the whole um, framework forward, mm -hmm. but there's just, a, there's, you know, it, these, this, the, the um, amount that of basically bar that you can put inside the little uh, hilt mm -hmm. of, the, of the, it's actually a lightsaber sword, sword holder or mm -hmm. hilt. Um, you just pull, you just kind of like, it's like any, any kit that you get, you have to sort of like sort of fiddle with it to get it exactly right. Mm -hmm. Not saying they're not built, uh, um, perfectly as far as the way you put it together, mm -hmm. but something like this, it's, everything is a little micro, uh, right. measurements. So, um, anyway, so what you do when you, when you put this thing together, and you put the supports on, it may pull this part forward a little. Mm -hmm. So then you kind of like gently sort of like pull back on it a little bit or you pull, pull the uh, bar out of here, just a t just the tiniest little bit. I mean, we're talking about a half a millimeter. Mm -hmm. Still plenty of space for it to hold on, but then you'll get it straight. Sure. So, so again, it's when you know, when you get into these small little kits like this, especially when it's held 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 by supports like that, you do have to sort of adjust it on the after you build it a little mm -hmm. bit to get it exactly how you want it. And we'll we'll talk about that more with the mesh helicopter too. Okay, very very cool. That's well, thanks for going over that. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> did I tell you that this spun? Look at that. This spins. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And this spins. Okay, now I'm done. Everything that should moves does. John, thank you very much for going over the Agile. I'm going to kick things over now to Landon because obviously this kit does come with a little minifigure. And we got to take a closer look at our very high profile British secret agent. Yes. Um, let's start at the top. That helmet. Uh, it's, it's kind of a goofy looking helmet, but that is actually like a realistic. Uh, um, it's like a flight helmet, actually. Uh, it's not a GoPro? It's got, I mean, you know, there's a bit of a GoPro. That's, that's like an aftermarket attachment, <laughs> I think, to that helmet. Um, I, I do like these these uh, pilot helmets uh, from this era because I, I, I kind of think that they led into or they were the inspiration for modern day fast helmets in sure. some respects because that's, that's got the audio there like the, ear, the hearing mm -hmm. protection and then it's like a hard shell around it kind of designed around that hearing protection 
and um, it's pretty low profile because you're in like in a co in a cockpit right. or something like that. Um, so you don't want this big bulky helmet, which is again like think about a combat fast helmet. So that's kind of a side note, but. I thought that was interesting. You about can see the similarities. Yeah, I mean, totally. Just by looking at it, totally. kind of slim look, and then yeah, that your covers. Um, cool. what else? Let's get the let's get the uh, uh, elephant in the room. He's wearing some Birkenstocks, those sandals. Toes. <laughs> Yay! Everyone's so, favorite. I, I'm not making this up. This is this was going over the the source material. Watch like, the film. <laughs> You'll see what he he's, means. He's wearing sandals. It looks like he just walked off the cricket. Mini field figures with toes. Out. I mean, I, I'm unsettled by it. I'll be. <laughs> they're funny. It's. Uh, slightly unsettling. But Do you want toes or plate feet? A, mini, a mini figure itself is kind of this, I mean, not even kind of, it's totally this goofy thing. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's, the proportions are, what, what, what even are they, you know? It's Four bizarre, forehead. bizarre. Um, but so get this, speaking of head, trying to capture that, the, the look of the face, you know, like you do. Like you with, do. With faces, I guess. <laughs> I was trying to make it look nothing like it, like right. it was. I just, I did myself. It was me, it's me, <laughs> like chiseled, whatever. Yeah, right. Um, some nice, uh, again, you know, basing it off myself, some nice chest to this. <laughs> no, not going with this. <laughs> so they may have like a nice comfortable looking shirt, a little bit of, a bit of shadows going on yeah. to simulate the kind of nice. The wrinkle as he jumped quickly into his fabric. cockpit. Um, some pants. Uh, pants are the things that you wear on your legs. You so should wear pants he... if you're going to fly a helicopter. That's an important component. Kilts are not recommended for helicopter flying. <laughs> um, yeah, because when you jump off, they... never mind. What? What happens? <laughs> Explain to me. Um, and then he's got hands. That's, he's that's got all. Little little U shaped hands. <laughs> Imagine if your hand was that. It'd be like the giant like coffee like coffee mug, not yeah, mug. Um, just, like a coffee you, can. What if you couldn't grab anything too, and you literally I just can't had to love like, find my, something? That my could newborn click. child. Yeah, right. Click around head. Will please make giant brick arms. I can't grab anything. So click. I, I spend a lot of time researching, just walking around in life. Seeing what I can and can't hold on yeah, to. It's right. just, just awful. Okay. So there you have it. <clears throat> the British secret agent, high profile one, that is included with the Agile, which is a cool little kit. That will conclude the Designer Studio episode. Thank you very much for watching.